Welcome back to the channel and the man on the screen is Van Lathan. You probably recognize him from the show TMZ. He was there for a number of years, but now he's on his own doing his own thing. And he and his co-host had a conversation with Emmanuel Acho. He's a former NFL player, a Nigerian American. And since football, he has become some type of liaison between black Americans and white people. Not sure how he got there, but he's always looking for a way to shoe in the fact that he's Nigerian, he's not from here, and how differently he views white people than, than regular black Americans or foundational black Americans or ADOS, whatever you consider yourself um, as a freedman here. I'm going to play a clip where Van had to actually check him about some of his viewpoints on black America as opposed to him being Nigerian American. And then I'll follow up with commentary. Oh, when white people say, well, racism doesn't exist. I know why they say that. Because I've been in them rooms when they saying that. Mm -hmm. When I kick it with black people and they're like, all white people are racist. Hmm. I know why you're saying that. All the while, I have the privilege and luxury of not having generational trauma because my parents were born in Nigeria. So man, my method is removing some of the sting um, because I don't have that sting and trying to deliver a message in a manner that people can receive it. Okay. Let me tell you why what you just said offends me. Okay. All right. You saying that you don't have generational trauma and you didn't mean it this way, but the reason, and, and it's, I have to name it. You saying that you don't have any generational trauma in some way, meaning, or that in some way, meaning that your delivery method to white people is going to be either more effective or more sanitized is to me dangerous. And let me tell you why. Everybody that you just named and what you're talking about does what they do in different ways. I don't think that any of the things that they do are necessarily harmful. But what I could say is a black man, a prominent one, acting as an emotional butler for white people and serving them the most milk toast, unspicy, unseasoned brand of racial discourse and accountability possible could definitely be harmful. Like we're fighting for our lives. And to me, having a conversation like that at that particular time, it's not that it's a different method. Everybody has a different method. Is that it's the wrong method is that it gives cover. Van called that man an emotional butler for white folks. <laughs> I love it. I love it because it's been far too long that he has gone. Emmanuel has gone unchecked. He just finds himself hosting these different racial conversations. He always has to point out that he's Nigerian American. So somehow that makes him more qualified to speak on the issues and try to bridge the gap. No, you're involved in something that has nothing to do with you. He is an immigrant. I'm not sure if he's first generation or whatever, but certain conversations are not meant for outsiders. And if, if I were to move to Nigeria, I can't be in the middle of whatever situations they have going on in Nigeria. That has nothing to do with me. I'm not from there. I don't know the history the full history. I may be able to read a few books, hear a few documentaries or conversations, but that doesn't give you the full meat and potatoes of what's really going on there. And I'm so glad that he finally got checked and they're going back and forth on Twitter. And I'm going to show some of the tweets here and I'll read some. Van Lathan tweeted, Emmanuel Acho, I'm not sure what you intended to convey by stating your Nigerian background frees you of generational trauma and takes the sting out of your combos with white people, but it feels like you're purposefully othered yourself from the descendants of slaves. Why? Emmanuel responded, I made no such suggestion. That was the reach the host of the show made and led the listener to at the 
3945 mark, I stated my lineage to allow understanding for my predisposition to be less hostile. It was giving the listener insight as to why, not implying I'm better. So Emmanuel tweeted, Van, the entire conversation was a public setup. Your producers lured me into committing by misleading me about the topics of conversation. You manipulated my relationship with Rachel in order to publicly air your grievances as opposed to preparing me for productive dialogue. And he attached the information from the show's producer that said, great, thank you for confirming mostly NFL playoffs. They'll also probably touch on the series Uncomfortable Conversations, The Bachelor, plus he and Rachel going to UT. Let us know if you have any questions. So Van responded, I don't give a about any of that. Sincerely, if you're not prepared to discuss things that you said publicly, then you shouldn't do interviews. I haven't posted any clips until now, and that's because you're Rachel's friend. You said I reached. I posted proof I didn't. So Rachel is his co-host and apparently a friend to Emmanuel Acho, and she didn't get to say much because Van was fired up the majority of the interview. I only found that clip on Twitter, but the show must be called Higher Learning. As you see there on the picture, it has Higher Learning on it. So you can go find the whole interview there. It looks to be maybe close to an hour or so. But that comment section on Twitter, they lit Emmanuel Acho up. A majority seemed like Black Americans, but there were a few Nigerians that were calling him out as well, which is very necessary because a lot of times... Um, our people from the diaspora will come over here and they'll try to check foundational black Americans or black Americans by saying we're so divisive and blah, blah, blah. But they don't have smoke for the other people that we're responding to. So it was good to see them check him. And I want to read one of the comments from the comment section because Emmanuel Acho was talking about uh, not having trauma and this particular comment stood out. It was a person named James Jones, old guard warrior. And it says, your trauma shows itself differently than ours. Your family's trauma drove them to immigrate to a foreign racist land. Our trauma results in anger. Yours resulted in conformity, accommodation, and acceptance of your colonialized, defeated state of body and mind. Oops. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Make sure you hit that like button before you go. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, peace.